Okay, so let's call the meeting to order. And uh, the first thing is the minutes. So first of all, check and make sure you have a little asterisk next to your name to show your attendance. And if you don't have an asterisk next to it, shame on you. Okay, voted no action, minute man, not voted a bond authorization, unanimous plans for. Actually, no. The pickets in front of the town hall were protesting uh, they, they were outsourcing. Out, yeah, okay, they were, they were protesting co uh, custodian outsourcing. So if you could change that. Oops, down there. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay, anybody have a, a motion? Uh, a second? Second. Okay, uh, any other corrections? <coughs> okay, so aside from getting rid of the collective bargaining and put in custodial outsourcing, uh, all those in favor of the minutes is corrected, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <coughs> Okay, right now, uh, scheduled for, it'll just leave this out, 7.36. Well, probably nobody else is coming anyway. Uh, the Retirement Board has submitted two articles, none of which seems to cost us any new money. I'm surprised. Okay, so... Uh, John, would you like to get up or Rich to just sort of quickly go through them? We have two new members. Yeah, Rich, yeah, I can hear it. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, if you could. Okay. Actually. Uh, the, for the new members on the, on the finance committee, we worked out a, an arrangement with the Finance Committee years ago to start funding uh, a <coughs> liability, both of being uh, other post-employment benefits other than pensions. Uh, and uh, we've got about $9 million into that fund. Now, uh, we're hopeful that the Finance Committee will continue that program. Uh, I can suggest to you that the state years ago opted to fund pensions uh, and force communities to fund pensions, I should say. And we suspect uh, that that will be the case in not too distant the future of funding uh, health care liabilities. So uh, Arlington would have a head start on that. Uh, we are very enthusiastic. As a retirement board, we're very enthusiastic about that program, and we hope you'll continue it. What's the balance in there now? About nine million. Eight point nine. Million. <coughs> Eight point nine million. Okay. Eight point nine million. Uh, okay. Well, as the John is the chairman for the new people, chairman of the retirement board, has been on it for a couple of years, hasn't it, John? <laughs> uh, do you have any questions for the chairman? Besides somebody who didn't silence theirs. Okay, this is the uh, other post-employment. We started funding this, 97, 98? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, and uh, we've had, we funded it with the balance between the uh, a fund called the Non-Contributory Retirement Fund, mm -hmm. our, our, our program, which was made up of people who worked for the town back in the 40s, no, 30s. 30s. And so we took a $500,000 balance, which is what it was back in 1997 or something like that. And then that fund keeps going down. So we took that 
and whatever we had to appropriate, and we took that difference and put it in this fund. So now it's down to like 100,000 and change that we appropriate for non-contributory, so we take 400,000 and put it into this fund. And then we've got uh, 155,000. Um, when the Board of Selectmen increased what the retirees had to pay into health insurance from 10% to 15, that 155,000 savings goes into the OPEB fund. And I think we've been taking some money out of the uh, health insurance trust fund, uh, 300,000. Uh, the health insurance trust fund was about three million and we just take a piece out of it each year. Um, and I think the manager contributed some out of his budget last year. So those are the pieces that we've seen if you check fast uh, uh, prior FinCom reports. Uh, what's, so we've got nine million, what's the liability? Uh, that's the one you get to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll give the bad news to Rich. Uh, one, as of one one fourteen, as you know, all actuarial studies are done on January 1st, and all the prior year data is used, so the prior two years data. It was $185 million on one one fourteen. I might add we're only funding a small portion. Actuarially, we're not even close to funding this uh, on a full-time basis, uh, but at least it gives us a head start in case the state moves to, uh, to make this mandatory, which we fully feel they will sooner or later. Any questions? The, uh, now, the, the actuary, what, what percentage cost of living were they using? Because, you know, were they, have they been using a 3% cost of living, or have they gone down to the 2% we've actually been giving, or? What he uses because it's health insurance is different based on how you're funding it um, and stuff. One is four and a half percent, one is seven and a half percent. As it was said the other night at the retirement board meeting, pensions are mandated to be funded. Healthcare right now is not. So there's some different philosophies out there on how to do it. The contribution, which is called the ARC, if we were really funding it, would be $16 million, which is $6 million more than we're putting to the pension funds right now. Uh, so, I mean, you know, but in order to get the GASB requirements and help with the bond ratings and the balance sheet for the town, the fact that you're approving money to fund it is helping other aspects of the town. Um, so, the $9 million does put us ahead of a lot of other towns that are just kind of not addressing it right now. John? Uh, I, I'm very naive about uh, what health care is available to retirees. Can they stay in the in the health plan that they're in uh, as employees, or? Well, it, I'll just say um, because healthcare keeps changing. As of February third, two thousand and sixteen, the way the rules are, is that they can maintain the same health care. Except if they're over sixty five, they go into Medicare and they have a supplement program. But if they're under sixty five, it's the same uh, program that they're in now. Now, if they don't qualify for Medicare. Yeah, very rare now at this point because you had to, if you didn't, if you were in the uh, municipal before 1986 and never changed jobs or anything, then you wouldn't qualify for it, but everybody else does. Yeah. So. Okay, so it's pretty much everybody. Yeah, it's pretty much everybody yeah. now. And if you, even if you are and you're married to someone that is eligible for it, that's called a trigger and they go into it anyway. So it's very hard not to be eligible these days. There was a time when there was a number of people that didn't have to be in it. Okay, is there, any other, is there any questions? Any other questions? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Now the other one, we don't have any numbers of articles, uh, is the uh, pension adjustment for former 25 year accidental disability employees. Um, so if you wanna give a brief overview of this. Yeah, if, uh, for those that might be new on the finance committee, and for those who might not remember about this article, uh, uh, this is an article that uh, allows 25-year employees, uh, when they retire, not to fall below 50% uh, of their active counterpart. So, uh, 
We believe uh, the finance uh, the retirement board uh, believes that uh, this is a positive article for both the town and the employees. We believe it's possible for the uh, good for the town from the standpoint that uh, we maintain <coughs> long-term employees and therefore uh, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, and it's also good, all, 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 <coughs> excuse me, also good uh, for the employees. Uh, most of them that are here for 25 <coughs> years uh, don't get this benefit kicked in uh, for a good long time after they've uh, retired because uh, they're obviously over and above the 50% uh, when they retire. Uh, they usually are at 80%. Uh, so we think it's a positive program. It's been in effect since the 1980s, and you know the retirement board strongly suggests that we continue the program. Okay, any, any questions? Uh, for, again, for those of you who are new, that sort of May 1st, 2010 date in there uh, was to sort of cover a loophole that actually John and I found mm. uh, in it. So um, uh, that closes off and basically says uh, you have to qualify for at least a 50% pension in order for this to, when you retire in order for this to kick in. Yeah, we had a few employees uh, that you know started when they were 18 or 19 years old and had the 25 years uh, you know, before uh, they were at 50%. Uh, so we wanted to close that loophole uh, and they had to wait to, to at least they uh, got to the 50%. Peter? Uh, do you have a ballpark figure of uh, how much this cost the town? So last year it increased the payroll about $28,000. Um, you pay the COLA first, the way it's voted, and then after the COLA you look and assess if the person's 50% below the position they left. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? That's $28,000 on a, on a budget of? The payroll is um, over $14 million yeah. a year. Yeah, $28,000 on a payroll that's over. 14 minutes a year, just to put okay. that in Are there any other questions from the committee? Okay. Uh, Rich, John, thank you very much for coming. Oh, I'm sorry, I did have a Okay, Paul. Um, last year, there was a, a third article from the Retirement Board about um, increase of survivor benefits, and we voted no action and said that we would be evaluated this year again. Was yeah, that we, we delayed. We delayed that. We felt that the economic environment wasn't great to be pushing new, uh, new benefits this year, but uh, we thought that we would push that, push that off for a year. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Again, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Nice to see you all. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Okay, you take care. Okay, uh, uh, the chairman who's taking who's uh, taking care of this for the FinCom request that we vote this later when he brings in all the retirement stuff. So uh, I will put this on the table for now. Okay, I think um, what I'd like to do now is go through the warrant. So once everybody. Take their warrants out. Oh, it's actually got, well, it's got a couple of numbers. Okay, so go to page four. And I'm gonna read through them and mention them um, and give, you know, say whether I think Selectman Redevelopment Board or um, you must feel perfectly free in stopping and saying, should we hear that or something like that. Now the Finance Committee can report on anything they want. Uh, that they believe has a financial impact. We try to control ourselves a little bit in doing that because we have enough work to do anyway. Um, 
But, you know, it is our ability to do, and I think we even had a, uh, made a comment about uh, a zoning article last year. Okay, so measure of wooden barks, assistant town moderator, then the next bunch, uh, zoning. Um, and, you know, you just got these today. So if you go through them over the next weekend and you want to change your mind and hear something, you know, we can do that. So, but the whole list of the first articles are zoning. Actually, there's a lot more zoning than I can remember in many years. Okay. Page six and seven are all Actually, zoning. Uh, I know we're probably going to skip the zoning, but last year when we talked about it, I think we, what we came down to was wanting to know from the building department what these articles were going to cost them. So we want to do that again. I'm sorry? Do we want to ask the building, cut to it and ask the building department if they find any associated costs with these, whether it's their cost or anything? Um, they don't have to come in. Last year they did. Who, who doesn't read it? Who, I'm yeah, sorry, Paul? Yeah, it'll be Daryl and, and me meeting with the building inspector. We can bring it up when yeah. we meet with him and if there are any issues he brings up, we can bring them to the board. Okay, great. That's a good idea. Okay, so Paul will do that. Uh, I'll make a note of that. Okay. Now we go to page eight. Wow, a lot of zoning, interesting. Okay, then we have bylaws expanding equal protection. Okay, so I'll, I'll say selectman, but again, we could always change our mind. Uh, Human Rights Commission Executive Director. So, I'll say Selectman slash FinCom, because we'll want to know if there's any cost. Question mark. Okay, Arlington Human Rights. Looks like an amendment to the, so I'll say Selectman. Arlington Commission and Cultural Membership. Sounds selectman. Okay, page 10. Uh, tree preservation bylaw. Okay, selectman. Bylaw, electronic distribution of notices and materials. You know, provide enforcement measures. So again, it goes to the question of will there be a cost for enforcement or inspections or permits or anything? I don't know. Uh, provide enforcement measures. Now, who would enforce this? It's the bylaws. Who? I mean, it happens when there's major construction on a site, so it sounds like it might be the building inspector. Okay, so why don't you ask the building inspector about that also? Okay. The tree warden. The tree warden. Uh, electronic distribution of notices and materials. One thing will be interesting, um, the governor filed a major bill with the state legislature uh, with all kinds of reforms for municipal government. And I think one of the things was for electronic distribution of notices, materials, uh, and everything. Needless to say, the newspapers, uh, those few that are left, the newspapers will probably be fighting it tooth and nail because all you have to do is look through a newspaper and that's significant. So. Um, I'll put down selectman now, but if that f passes, you know, could save some money. Camping on public property. 
So I wonder if we've had homeless people. I'm sorry? There's some in East Arlington. They have built structures. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, the homeless. Yeah. yeah. Down, down near the end. Yeah, yeah. serious structures, not yeah. just tests. Yeah, if you go through, uh, I walk through the uh, Our Life up mm -hmm. towards Belmont yeah, a lot, yeah. and, and you'll see, you yeah. know, little paths going in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. I think they've been eliminated a lot because of all the work done there, but you can imagine people actually living there over the winter. Yeah. yeah they had some yeah. problems in there, too. Okay. Demolition by neglect of historic buildings. Okay. Selectman. Now here's an interesting vote. Uh, email accounts from members of public bodies. See if the town will vote to provide email accounts for the exclusive use of town business to members of the... Uh, Okay, well, I don't know how, uh, what one of uh, my more techie people on the FinCom, is there a cost to this? Very tiny. Just to set up more email accounts. Yes. Yeah, okay. User headed. <laughs> okay, so you can have your own uh, email account for the town. The only account we have now is I set up a email account, um, a Tosti, and I never use it, but it's on the, you know, when I send out to the whole FinCom, it automatically goes there. Um, and it's just strictly for saving of emails. Um, so, I, I mean, I think the purpose of this is that any emails that get sent to the Finance Committee will get stored electronically so that a public information request will get them easily. Yeah. Anybody want to hear it? No. No? Okay. So, <coughs> Uh Now, this is one. To see if the town will vote to prohibit policy making elected and appointed officials from lobbying or engaging others to lobby on their behalf on matters affecting the town unless specific lobbying initiatives have been approved at an open session of a public meeting of a public body of the town or take any action related there too. Um, I will disobey, you know, well, you know, this has got to be a conflict with something small like the United States Constitution of, uh, on freedom of speech, but uh, anybody want to hear it? Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, Gloria, can you set up this? How, how is this a, fi a finance? Policy making. I think it would affect us as members. Yeah. Yeah. In, in our, in our so, for example, I think we'd have. So, if I read this, right, it's prohibit policy making like uh, uh, to lobbying on behalf of matters affecting the town. So, so if I send an email like a lot of us do to our state rep every year saying you screwed us on state aid, we're now lobbying our state rep on yep. state aid. That's the number one thing we do. On that's probably the email we mostly send. Perhaps we should hear from town council. I mean, this sure. seems like a yeah. legal issue. The other thing it would affect, I think, is it would have, um, you know, if, if members are going to support or oppose um, a, a debt exclusion or an override or something like the uh, Community Preservation Act, uh, that's, yeah. that's lobbying. You know, it's, it's, I mean, this is very broad. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, so. Uh, that's so, time, so <laughs> okay, wait a minute. One at a time. John? So can we invite town council to discuss, the, discuss this issue with us? It seems to me to be eminently a, a legal issue. Are we a policy making body? Oh, yeah. I mean, of course, a lot of this just interprets we're not, well, that's an interesting question. Policy making, we're a policy recommending. We do, I suppose, do policy when we vote reserve fund transfers. So I, I'm sure we're targeted here. Um, I will ask town council. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, okay, next article, vote authorizing community ch choice aggregation. Oh, electric. This is a uh, financial authorized board so I can commence a community choice. which is more expensive than energy. <coughs> so it's going to increase somebody's costs. OK, you want to hear it? Yes. Yeah. OK. Gloria? Uh, removal of easement restriction. Is this the one that we discussed by Several years ago? It looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it. Same no, name. it's a new, different name. I thought we settled that. I guess not. It's a different, it's a different, if it's a different piece of, yeah, a different parcel. So different. it's not the same parcel? <clears throat> no. It's uh, next to it, I think. I'm sorry? I think it's next to it. Well, for removing an easement, we're eliminating something of value that the town might have purchased at some point. Uh, I have no idea. And probably increasing the value of the parcel. So I think last time the manager negotiated a sum of money for it. I have no idea what it was. Uh, shall we get involved or at least ask questions? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Gloria, that's that one. Transfer of town property. No. Oh. I think so, yeah. It is, yes. To the army for the perpetual use of affordable housing. Yeah, because we get money for that. Okay. Of course, if we transfer it to them, we lose the money, but we also lose the cost. Yeah. Mr. Belskis sits in front of me at town meeting, and he told me that he thinks transferring this over gets us firmly over the 1.5% on 40B. Uh -huh. That's why he put it in there. Yeah, that's why he's there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to just cut to the chase on his hearing. Okay, so we'll hear that one. Uh, local option taxes. Um, that's our standard article. So, endorsement of CBG, that's selectman. Revolving funds is the selectman. Collective bargaining, I think, is being eliminated because uh, all the contracts are done. So uh, I think so. I, I mentioned this to the manager, and he's going to he's going to uh, delete it or have it deleted. Uh, position reclassification. We'll uh, work on that. Budgets, obviously, capital budget. Uh, rescind borrowing authorizations. Okay, appropriation, so this will be a new one. Uh, preser community Preservation Fund. Okay, I'll leave this to other people. Um, the town meeting has to approve this for this money to be spent, is that correct? Yeah. Right. Okay, so they should have a recommendation from the Finance right. Committee on what we think. Okay, Gloria? Could you, anybody close to the community preservation, do you know what their timing is or anything? I think they just started meeting a couple weeks ago. Okay, uh, Gloria, uh, looking at the calendar, uh, Dick,
Do we have a, a date for the meeting yeah, for the school you, committee? You will receive your school budget March 9th, and the hearing is the 16th. Okay, so the school committee is coming in on the 16th. Right. I suppose we should say school department. Okay, and Alan. again, I don't want to schedule any hearings or meetings whatsoever uh, on that last week in March. John? Uh, yeah, just going back to the, the Community Preservation Fund, don't, don't we have a, a FinCom representative on that committee? I thought we were... We were I don't think so. Well, I thought we were supposed to have somebody on that. Meeting. No. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, should they have, though, since this is moving forward, sort of with every other large expenditure, should they have a... <coughs> I don't want to call it a FinCom representative, sponsor, whatever you want to call it. Like, <coughs> and as Steve DeCourcy, obviously Charlie's on the capital budget. Do you have a liaison to the capital to the community preservation? You are. So we have a we have a liaison to the. Uh, you saw me go up there and defend them the other night at that meeting, right? So. <laughs> okay, Gloria, um, could you see if you could nail down? the Community Preservation Act. I believe the chairman is Clarissa? Clarissa Rowe. Yeah, Clarissa Rowe. So if you could contact her and say, we'd like to get you in on March 7th, 9th, or 14th. <coughs> and See if they push back, but you know, give them those three dates. What's the third one? Nine and fourteen. Seven, nine, or fourteen. Seven. Okay. Uh, appropriation Mugar application reviews. Okay. Okay, so we'll have to hear from the town manager on this. And we might as well schedule a time when we can talk to the manager about all of them. Appropriation, capital budget, school capacity. Okay, so this is the 10 registered voters. So I have to have a hearing on that. Okay, sewers and water, the next two are Grant, you know, so if you could try to nail those down, we could just vote on those ahead of time and all. Okay. Ah, Minuteman. Okay, uh, Steve, Steve here? Uh, okay, Gloria, could you, uh, Get a hold of Steve DeCourcy and ask him uh, if, the, if he could uh, set up a meeting and offer the 7th, 9th, and 14th and tell him somebody else gets the chance too. So whoever gets there first gets the date. tuition or would this also include uh, money for the building? Uh, this is the operating budget. It says capital costs. But, uh, uh, yeah. The operating budget includes capital costs. Yeah, yeah it does. Right, yes. I mean, the, the capital costs for a new building. No, but it's not. No, the, the, there's normal capital costs in the budget every year, yeah. but the, the, the other one is uh, bonding. If they, if they go to a bond, they have to have special okay. approval. That's what the uh, the other article was, was about. I think I heard February 23rd for a possible minute and school committee vote on the project. Right, but, but there's no other article. Um, I mean, I mean, article, is there? Well, no, but we have to, well, that'll have to be probably a special. Yeah, I think there's going to be a that special. That would be a special. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that'll be that because, you know, March 
that'll actually be before, be before our, the annual town meeting. So we'll probably have to have a special. <clears throat> okay. Um, Gloria is working on all the committees and commissions. Uh, our usual policy, as you know, is to offer them if, if they want the same amount of money as they got last year, they don't have to come in. If they want more money, they have to come in and plead their case. So we're working on that. Uh, town celebrations. Um, that's a town manager, and that's in the back of the budgets. Appropriation miscellaneous. Water bodies, and that's next Monday. So water bodies is two A. Uh, Harry Barber, Corey will need that. She agreed that's level funded. I'm sorry? Uh, Christine agreed that's level funded. Okay, so we don't need a hearing. Nope. Anybody want to just, might as well, we're here. Uh, the, the Harry Barber program, that's for the new people, that's uh, set aside. So I think it's elderly people yeah, who want to earn a little money that they can use towards paying their taxes or their rent or something can earn up to, what was it, $750, I think, uh, doing work in various places, answering phones, something like that. It, it's been around for years. Uh, we can discuss it now. Anybody want to, uh, I'll move. Dick? I'll move it. Okay, so you move favorable action? Right. No, second. Second. Okay, 7,500. Yep. Any discussion or questions? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Okay, whenever I take a vote like this for the two new people, I'm just going to you know, glance over a thing, call it unanimous. If for some reason you want to vote against it or you want to abstain uh, or something like that, you've got to get my attention. So don't be shy. Um, we throw things or? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? We throw things or? <laughs> no, the chairman does not like. <laughs> There's committees that are worse to be on than yours. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, appropriation. This is the hearing we just heard. Uh, so this was uh, 2315. And this one was uh, also 2315. So we've heard that, and we'll uh, discuss and vote on these when we hear all the rest of the retirement stuff. Oh. You're right. I've been so well doing, you know, my checkbook and everything has been 16 now. Okay, now long-term stabilization fund. Okay, actually, this is something we could discuss. Uh, we've been appropriating, we have several stabilization funds, as you know. Uh, one is the long-term stabilization fund, which is sort of the permanent stabilization fund. That means it's not there as a rainy day fund, it's there for emergencies. I mean, you know, we get sued and we, you know, we need to come up with a couple million dollars right away. That's what that's for. Um, it, it's not there just because we have to sort of reduce budgets. Um, but obviously, you know, town meeting makes the final decision. So we've been putting $100,000 a year into this fund uh, for quite a while now. And uh, the question is, you know, should we continue? So discussion, does anybody want to make a motion? How much is in the fund? Last time I saw it was like 2,988,000 or something like that. It, it, it hasn't been earning a lot of interest. <laughs> okay, for 100,000. Okay, moved and seconded for 100,000 into the permanent stabilization fund. Any discussion or questions? Do we know how it's being, how much is being used, when it's used, what the status of the schools that use it? Um, I'm sorry, I, want, I just wanted to know a little bit about how it's being used by the schools, uh, or by students on, on, on special education. Okay, it's, um, now that's the reserve fund. 
I'm sorry? I think you're talking about the reserve fund. No, it's the special education transfer funds. Because this is a separate fund. The town meeting can vote monies into it, which they've been doing, and only the town meeting can vote it out. So this hasn't been used by anybody. Okay, Chuck. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. I think about, um, I want to say, I want to say about seven right years here. ago, oh, um, here. there was a, uh, some, some severe water damage, I think it was to the town hall in the uh, library. Was it the library? Yeah. 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 And we took uh, money out of the, this fund <coughs> to cover the um, deductible that are, you know, that we weren't covered with insurance oh. for that, for that the issue. And uh, it was, you know, I think it was more than five hundred thousand dollars that we took out to touch. So we try not to do that very often. So it, it's it, it can only be voted in or out by by a vote of town meeting. Is that sort of answer? I think you so. I think that's fine for now. Thank you. Okay. Could Any other questions? Could under the Mugar article, could we recommend using some of that to fund the Mugar legal fees? There's the, there's, the, there's the article of funding a MUGAR advisory and legal fees. Might not be an appropriate use. Yes. I mean, the money basically could be voted out by town meeting for any purpose the town meeting seems appropriate. Uh, so it could, yeah. So when we get to that article, we could potentially recommend using that as a source of funds for to pay the MUGAR legal expenses. Uh, yeah. Charlie? Yeah, I, I, it seems to me that the, the MUGAR issue is a uh, first of all, it's operational and it's political, and I don't think we should be using this reserve fund for. Okay, and when we, we talk about that article, we discuss it. I just wondering if that would be might, might be a, a call it legal use. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, the motion has been made and seconded for a hundred thousand dollars to go into the long-term stabilization fund uh, for next year. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Okay, unanimous. Uh, appropriation overlay reserve. Anybody have the latest five-year plan? Um, <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, the reserve, the overlay reserve, is what's set aside for abatements, and uh, we usually. What did we do last year? Because I don't think we have the, the assessors. I don't think we have the assessors coming in. No, but we need to do the assessors department as part of the. Oh, I see. What you're <laughs> okay, so overlay reserve for 16 was 800,000 voted. So usually we would do 600,000. Well, wait, that was the money going in. This is the money coming out. Oh, you know something? You're right. And it was it was three hundred and fifty thousand that we took out last year. Yeah. Okay, so we've got to hear from the assessors how much they're releasing. Okay. Uh, transfer of funds, special education stabilization fund. Uh, Last year, you remember, the, the, this, for some reason, the article didn't get put in. Um, so this year, when I put in the Finance Committee articles, I put it in. Uh, so this is the amount of money um, uh, that will go from the school department to them, or to into this fund, and then could also be transferred back out again. Um, now, we put 200000 more into the reserve fund this year than normal uh, because of they didn't have an article in there. Now, they did put in on the promise that they would turn back at least $200,000 out of their budget to go into free cash. Uh, and I verified that. They transferred 209000 and change back into that. So at some point, um, they could come in, we can give them the two hundred, dollars and then they could either use it if they need it or they could, the town meeting could transfer it back into uh, this fund. So we'll probably discuss that later on when, the, uh, when we get closer to the school department figuring out what their special ed budget is, is looking at. 
Uh, yes, John. You want to talk about that now or? I mean, I, I'm, as you probably know by now, I, I fret about these various reserve funds here, there, and everywhere, so to speak. And this is an example of one, I think, whereby all you do is make it hard to get hold of the money if you need it, it seems to me. Because in order to get the money out of this fund, if you need it, you've got to have a town meeting vote. Right. Whereas if it was simply in our reserve fund and it was needed, it could be appropriated right then and there. That plus the fact that it's just sort of one more of these funds that where money is being held, uh, you know, it's like having pots of gold here, there, and everywhere. It just, yeah. just didn't seem useful to me. Jack? <clears throat> the uh, school committee set this fund up four, I think it's four or five years ago. And that's the way they want it. So if they get some surplus money, they can transfer it into <clears throat> this uh, article for special education and they can hold it there until they need it. It's, it's but, but this, so there are two features on this. The, the first one is unlike unlike general fund appropriations that clear, or, or budgetary appropriations that clear into the general fund at the end of the year, this doesn't clear back at the end of the year. This, I think if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, this also has a cap on it. So this fund yes, can't go does. above 500,000. Yeah. Yeah. Once it's 500, it's there. Yeah. And then, then when it was established, the point of it, which still is the point of it, is supposed to be you know, on, and I'm just making an example here, if some point after the start of the school year, <laughs> A student comes into the district that is this, you know, mythical budget buster of two hundred thousand dollars we have to send out of the district to educate. Then they can go to this, and it's sort of there for that emergency, so they're not scrambling, you know, after the school year starts on how to how to fund something. So they can use it without, without town meeting vote. No, no, they'll need to town meeting. <laughs> so if you think about if you think about it mechanically, right? The teachers, I have to say this correctly. By the, by the end of the year, they've earned all of their compensation, but they haven't been paid all of their compensation. So there's about $1.4 million, I think, at the end of the year that gets, a, well, I'll call it accrued, I think the word's encumbered. It gets encumbered to be paid as summer payrolls. So if you think of, it, so if they had a $200,000, so they have that buffer at the end, right, which we had the issue with a few years ago. So they could, if a student came and had to go out of district, a $200,000 student, they could send them out, they could pay for it. They still have enough time left in their budget, like till June 30, to, to get the money to get out the vote, the meeting, put it back in. Okay. To get the money out in May, and they're just swapping it, right? The 200,000 would go in, cover that, and the money would come right back. Peter, I get it. Peter DePaul. But it, it, so, I, you know, yeah, uh, Dean's right. It's, it's the fact that our budget, our money disappears at the, on June 30. Yeah. This money could continue from year to year and be a, yeah. a reserve for that. Uh, Charlie? <clears throat> yeah, I think the, the, one of the reasons why this uh, reserve fund was set up for special education was because, um, you know, year after year we've seen the school department uh, come to the finance committee and town meeting and talk about the, uh, you know, the, the rising cost of special education and these uh, tremendous, uh, you know, as, as Dean just mentioned, some out of district student or something uh, have requiring special uh, Transportation and tuition, uh, but but in fact, you know, looking closely at the special education budget, at least my opinion is it's been flat to declining. And what they're cons what, the, what they really come to us about is the variability. There's a huge variability. The, the average is moving along a certain rate, but from one year to the next, they can jump five hundred thousand dollars. And that's what this is supposed to be in place to address. Okay, John. I, I, I don't see why it's any different in substance from the town manager coming in here and, or, or, or the <clears throat> police coming in here and saying he needs, you know, an extra fifty or $100,000 at the end of the year because they have too much overtime. <coughs> how, is it, how is it different from that and why should we have this separate fund to handle situations like that? Because, okay, so, so here's how it's different. In, in a town budget, as, as we see at the end of the year, the manager has great ability to shift his costs through 
you know, delaying hiring of, of this position, delaying hiring of this position, slowing this down, leaving this vacant. And so in his larger, in his large budget, he has significant control over it. Come, and I'm just gonna draw a line on the sand, come September 1st, the school committee has no control at that point, right? Because once you start, 80, 90, 80, 85, 90% of their costs are salaries. And the teachers are in the classroom, the administrators are in the classroom, nobody leaves during the year. And so the cost, you could, you can project with great monetary position, precision where that money's gonna go throughout the year. So they don't have any flexibility to manage these problems. And I think that's what they've struggled with in the past is when they get hit out of nowhere. Like we saw with the, um, you know, if you get those mid-year state aid cuts, they have, they have a huge problem because, you know, the only recourse at that point, the only people you can let go are the people in the classroom and we're, we're not we going to do that. So that's, that's where they sort of have a difference and they get stuck. The, um, maybe, maybe I'll just think about this, but I, I don't see why one would want to put it then in a fund that's not immediately available any time you need it. Well, I, I talked that. to the superintendent about this at the end of last year. The, 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 the school system can roll over monies into special, uh, special uh, revenue funds and revolving funds, and it's basically hidden. And I said, um, and she wants it to be transparent. So I think we should do everything we can to encourage transparency. And this is a very transparent fund. Okay. And so I, you know, at least right. that's why I'd support it. That's, but, that's a good reason. Yeah. Okay, cemetery, we'll have to hear from Public Works and from the capital budget um, on the amounts that go through here. Uh, free cash, I don't have a, I, the numbers around someplace, but we can vote on that when we have a chance. Uh, this is the big fiscal stability fund. We'll probably vote on that last. This is the balancing article. You know, this is where, um, you know, the, the, the whole thing balances uh, the last meeting in March or if we have to, maybe the second week in April when uh, uh, we, we need to balance everything off. And uh, right now, by the way, I, I hope all of you, Catholic and non-Catholic, are praying for no snow. Um, we could really use some savings this year. Okay, uh, resolution handicap parking spaces. Resignation. I would assume this is under the this is under the board of selectmen or the traffic commissioners. <coughs> So this is really a selectman article. I, I've had to do all these lines and signs and statutes for my church, and it, 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 they're sort of a pain in the neck to figure out, but they don't really cost anything, because I'm sure the signs could be done down at Public Works um, on it, but anybody interested enough they want to hear it or? Okay, good. Uh, Resolution Community Preservation Plan. Vote to accept, receive, or re resolve to endorse the Community Preservation. Now, what was the other article? That's the appropriation. <clears throat> Tie the oh. two of them together at the hearing. The second time. Yeah, why do we have them? Okay. I will talk to the selectman about putting, why do we need two of them anyway? We're voting the appropriation. I think the plan's like a master plan. Which could have a long term plan. But what, what we ought to do, what we ought to do is let's see what they come up with. I mean, they haven't, they probably only had one meeting so far. Okay, so this other article, which is on page 13, is to see if the town will vote to make an appropriation from the Com Community Preservation Fund for the eligible projects for community Accounts for historic preservation, open space. So I'm assuming that they will put forth as appropriation with a breakdown of items, and we will and the town meeting will have to approve that. Yeah, they, they, they should have. A, I'm not positive, but I think they'll have about three million dollars because I think there's two years worth of of, uh, of uh, appropriations that yeah. of, of, of uh, revenue coming in from the from the surtax. 
Now, do, do they have to vote that? I mean, if they don't vote all of it, it just stays in the fund? They have a fund, yeah. They have to, I think it's 10% of, the 10 of their fund has to go, has to be expended into each of the uh, eligible categories. And, so, but that still has to be approved by town meeting. If it's not approved, I don't, I don't know what happens then. Okay. Uh, could you, Charlie, could you ask Clarissa why we have two separate articles? That do the same thing? No, it's not the same thing. Yeah, no. I think one's on appropriation. This is a plan. So they've got to come up with some sort of policy. Well, it's like a master you're going to do in the future. Oh, okay. The other one is an appropriation, what they want to spend this year. Okay, so one's the one's the budget and the other's the plan. Yes, if, if I could use capital funds. Yeah, yeah, but it may not it may not even be, I mean, we don't know what they're gonna do. It may not be a exactly a financial plan like um, like the capital plan community. They may they might say yeah, it might be an aspiration. You know, they want to focus on uh, on low cost housing. They want to focus on historic preservation. You know, who, who knows what they're going to say? Let, let them say it and do it. Okay, but it would make sense to put the two together. Yeah, Okay, so I will ask the board of selectmen uh, to put the two together. Because this is at the end, because that's where they put resolution. Okay, so I'll, I'll call the selectmen tomorrow morning and ask them to put the two together. Okay, resolution, return of Precinct 17 to the Highland Fire Station. Well, that's going to be interesting, because next election, next year, the, uh, they probably won't have the uh, polling place at the uh, Stratton. Be closed, yeah. yeah. Well, tell you what, why don't we let the selectmen handle that? Okay, that sounds good. And I think what I'm going to do on this is uh, the minute this becomes finalized, then Gloria works on putting together the finance committee report. Alan, of course, will start working on the, uh, the spreadsheets. And John, our new person, uh, put the spreadsheets for the uh, budgets. Uh, and get that working. As soon as I get any numbers, like if I have the free cash number at some meeting, I'll just ask that we vote that article. So we might as well, you know, knock off articles that we can get out of the way so we reserve as little for, as possible for the end of March. Uh, yes, Charlie? Uh, there, I thought there was going to be a special town meeting inside the annual town meeting this year. Is that the case? Uh, I don't know, but I would, I would imagine I think a lot of this has to do with Minuteman. In other words, if Minuteman passes a budget that goes to town meetings, then we'll have to have a special. But my understanding is that if the, um, if the regional agreement changes don't pass, if, so, if one town knocks them down, that they're not going to bother going to town meeting, they're just going to go straight to a referendum. So that's my understanding. Um, because, you know, for one, Arlington has already said up, down, and sideways that we're not supporting a new high school if the regional agreement doesn't change. But, uh, Paul? Do, have any other towns voted on the regional agreement? I would assume so, but I haven't heard anything. Has anybody else been following that? Um, I haven't heard. Uh, maybe I'll... I have some time tomorrow morning. I'll call Minuteman uh, or Steve. Status of agreements. Okay. Because uh, they're all bunched up in January and then early February. They're not. They're not finished by February 23rd, but they're pretty pretty close to being finished. Uh, so it'll be good, interesting to hear about that. Okay. Now, uh, Alan. Do you think at some point there'll need to be a special appropriation for the feasibility studies and planning for the high school? The of sort of taking? I would assume uh, that might be another item for, for the special town meeting uh, on that. So uh, we've got some, some big issues coming up between Minuteman for one, the high school for the other, the elementary schools, the middle school. Um, there, there's a lot of issues going uh, to be going on. Are there any budgets ready for presentation? Vision 2020 is here. 
Oh. Oh, great. Let me know if you can't hear me, but that's a rare event. Um, so hi, I'm Julie Brazil, and I am the chair of the Vision 2020 Standing Committee. I have a couple other people here with me, <coughs> and Joey Glushko from the Planning Department. Um, I won't rehash the specifics that are in the memo, but I did want to provide a little background context um, for any of the conversation. Um, so first, I'd like to use our colorful visual aid to point out that Vision 2020 is not one committee. We are a collection of committees under the Vision 2020 umbrella. Currently, we are eight active committees, and we are exploring adding a ninth. So we involve um, a large number of volunteers across, across a wide range of efforts. Um, Town meeting, when it established Vision 2020, set, said that we were to create, implement, monitor, and review methods for townwide participation in the Vision 2020 process. I think um, the town manager paraphrased that and put that in sort of human terms best. He said that he thinks Vision 2020 should be what people think of the day they wake up and realize it's time for them to get involved. So it's important for us to make sure that our work is <clears throat> inviting people to participate in the process of identifying community needs, working on possible solutions, and then collaborating with town departments and other groups in town to implement those solutions. That means that we can do in one year a wide variety of things. We sponsor precinct meetings, organize work days at Spy Pond or the Reservoir, host a forum on social justice issues, co-sponsor candidates night, put on art shows, provide workshops and training for our volunteers in specialized areas, and work on the annual town survey. We collaborate with the Department of Public Works, Chief Ryan, the Human Rights Commission, Disability Commission, League of Women Voters, the Planning Department, Arlington Public Schools, the Council on Aging, the Robbins Library, Conservation Commission, Housing Corporation of Arlington, and sometimes even the Mass Department of Transportation. So our request for increased funding is because we have a new expense in fiscal 17 of $1,100, and we are asking for an additional $800 to enable us to keep doing our work. So that's all I have to say. Um, obviously, we're here to answer any questions. Um, yes. So I have a couple of questions. One is, does this budget include any required training to use the new software? Uh, no. Uh, the the eleven $1 hundred dollars covers tech support, and we have been using that as we uh, got the software up and running, um, and um, so. Once we, if we continue to pay that $1,100, the, the support is free and um, the training modules that are online um, seem very adequate. Okay, and then um, just in the uh, fourth paragraph that I guess this software will reside on the planning department's laptop. Mm -hmm. So one, have you validated that that laptop has sufficient capacity? Yes, the software is up and running on okay. that laptop now. And then now. two, I assume, Makes me a little nervous that this is on a laptop, so I assume that you've got um, protocols in for backup and. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay, Greg. What's the volume of responses you 
Um, the last two years it has been uh, just over 6,000 surveys, so representing 32 to 34 percent of the population of households to be, is the number, yeah. 6,000 households, yes. Yeah. Two years in a row, yeah. John? So the increase of $800 is for new software that hasn't been updated. It's for the ongoing maintenance. The software itself has been purchased with CDBG funds. The software was purchased in 2006, correct? No, that was, that's, that's background. That's the old software. We've replaced that with replaced. new software purchased in December. So the 800 is <coughs> to what again? The 800, well, the, in, the new cost to us is $1,100. But when we ran the numbers, we think we can, uh, we only need an additional 800 in order to keep doing what we're doing. Um, now, is all this the purchase and the maintenance done through the town's IT department? Yes. Adam Kurowski managed the process for us and is handling the technical details. How much did the software cost? About $3,000. $3,100. Are there any other questions on any of the parts? When, when, do you know when your last um, budget increase was? We, are, we got our first budget um, last year of $3,000. So, and then we got $3,000 again for this year, fiscal 16, and we're asking for an increase for fiscal 17. And you, you, your money came from CDG before that, right? The money that paid to print the surveys, before that we had no, um, do you, can you answer that specifically? Um, it, it come the, it did come through the planning department and CDBG funds. Yes. So FY14, what was the budget? No, I do not. Okay, other questions? Not on just the 1100, but uh, anything here. I noticed, okay, I have one. Uh, speaker fees. What is, what's, is... Um, the speaker fees um, are when the diversity task group does a large um, <coughs> forum, they hired, a, they paid a speaker fee for the speaker last year, and they are planning um, a similar event next year. I mean, we, yeah, I mean, as a volunteer group, we're we're just assuming we're we're carrying forward the kinds of things that we have done. It's difficult for us to plan that far in advance. Okay. Other questions from the committee, Tom? Huh? If you don't get this increase, what's plan B? We will have to do um, less, and we will have to um, ask our volunteers to chip in um, out of their own money if they feel strongly about a particular project or event, which is hard on volunteers. Other questions? Or I'll ask the town manager to find money elsewhere. Um, have, you, have you applied for more community development water grant money? Um, no, we continue to ask for uh, community development uh, money just for the printing. Um, we could explore that, but that hasn't been. Do you know if that would be? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. <laughs> have, you, have you explored using community development block grant funds for this whole program? Um, it seems, uh, we believe it does not, all of it, if we were to try to expand it in different ways, um, some of that could not be funded via CDBG because of the restrictions placed on the use of CDBG funds. Okay. But the, the software somehow was able to be funded for it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Charlie? Do you know how many people are active in the business? I don't 
have any idea. I mean, it's, it's eight active groups. Some of them are very large, um, and there's not a formal membership. Vision 2020 was designed intentionally to have <coughs> an open concept um, for the task groups, um, so there, aren't, there isn't a way to really track membership. Would you say 20, 30, 40 people active? 50? I mean, just... 100? Okay. Yeah. Okay, Alan? The, uh, the rental fees, are the bulk of those for the town hall auditorium? Yes, um, that, that's, I think that's true, yes. Some, some, ta some years uh, there's an event in a school and then that's the custodial fees associated with, for town with doing that. Like that. That $920 yeah. sort of comes out and comes right back into the <coughs> Yes. <laughs> yep. Bill? Um, so this goes back about nine months, but uh, I'll put out uh, an email asking for a volunteer from the finance committee if they would be uh, on the standing committee or member of a large media group, and I've raised my hand. Mm -hmm. So I think we're having, uh, we just met tonight, correct? Yes. We're having our first meeting in about two weeks? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, briefly, just so my colleagues can hear, and for me also, what one or two things would you say is the role that I'm going to play mm -hmm. uh, on your committee, on your board, on Vision 2020, that will impact or I'll bring back to uh, the Finance Committee? In what ways okay. will that, yeah? Um, the concept of the Vision 2020 Advisory Board uh, is to have a mechanism where town leaders and elected officials, so that would be the manager, the superintendent, the moderator, a representative from the school committee, selectmen, redevelopment board, and the finance committee, um, and um, town council, um, meet uh, two or three times during the year with the standing committee and any members of task groups um, who are interested. Um, to make sure that there's information flowing back and forth. Vision 2020's model, its process is to be collaborative, to be sure that the solutions um, are, are connected to other things that are going on in town. So the perspective that um, the advisory board members bring is different from volunteers. Um, and that exchange of information back and forth um, is helpful. It, it ties the work into what else is going on. It makes sure that a committee doesn't get halfway into doing something that's duplicating uh, a project that's already been <coughs> begun um, by another group or, or a department. So, um, so that's the purpose, is to be sure that we're all pulling together um, and, and have information flowing both ways. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, the spot the $50 equipment fee. Mm -hmm. um, that is that when they do a work day, there's often um, some amounts of equipment that need to be bought, um, special spray paint to mark out invasive weeds that are being targeted or to be avoided. Um, it's just little supplies that are necessary for organizing 50 volunteers to come work on a cleanup day. And, uh, For which group? That was renting um, <coughs> kayaks. So when they do a large event, um, sometimes the event is a work day and sometimes it's um, bringing the, the neighborhood together and, and doing a collaboration with the Spy Pond, Friends of Spy Pond. Um, this, and so um, they uh, wanted to do a, an emphasis on using the pond and so there was, there were kayak rentals, so. And then on the reservoir committee, mm -hmm. 100 for supplies. Yeah. For supplies, that may be in the wrong category. That was printing. Oh, okay. Oh, materials for town day. Um, there, we often at our booth uh, have craft materials um, for projects, um, and, and that was what that was. Different groups come up with different ideas tied to their themes. On those uh, projects, especially Spy Pond, 
I'm assuming that's all coordinated with the Conservation Commission and DBW and mm -hmm. all that. Yep. Okay. I'd hate for Spot Pond to get cleaned more than once. No. <laughs> that would be a terrible waste. <laughs> Other questions? Okay. Great. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So what do you guys think on this article for a request for 3,800 we've appropriated for the last two years, 3,000? Tom? 3,000 is okay. The extra 800, I don't think they've explored other avenues yet. It's too easy for them to come here and just grab the 800. I think they need to explore or go back to the town manager. Or just get a few more volunteers. I mean, I just have a problem with giving more money to any organization right now. I find this the way we're going. Even though it is 800, but 800 here, 500 here. I think they could, might be able to dig that up exploring other avenues. My opinion. Other people? Paul? Well, it does look like they have cut other items in their spending to partially compensate for the increased um, software costs. So it seems like they're making an effort to uh, reduce their other costs to partially cover this new expenditure. No wish to the tune of 300. Okay, other, Peter? The, uh, the new software is is a great advance over stuff that we had we've been working with for the last eight years or so, ten years, whatever it is. And um, um, it should make it possible for the uh, volunteers to do what the planning department professionals have been doing. Uh, it, <coughs> it was quite impossible for volunteers to get in and, and use the planning department computers. Um, they were being used for other purposes of scheduling problems and so forth. But with this, this scheme here, we're using a, a uh, laptop, uh, they can go off, it's, it's going to be dedicated to this purpose. They can go off in a corner and do it, or they can take it home and do it. Uh, we don't know what, they don't know what the saving, I say we, but I don't have anyone. I'm just looking at it from the outside. The, um, we don't know yet what those savings are going to be, but they're, <coughs> they're probably going to be much more than eight hundred dollars. Okay. Other opinions, Alan? Well, I'll, I'll repeat what I say pretty much every year about these small volunteer committees. I think the the, the volunteer committees in this town are a bargain. They you know get an awful lot of service and an awful lot of improvement in quality of life for. Short money, and when you add all this together, you know, $100 here, $100 there, that's pencils and magic markers and signs and a couple posters and Swifty printing. And I, I think the town gets a real bargain for it. Uh, and it would be penny wise, pound foolish to nickel and dime it too much if it results in demotivating uh, very productive volunteers. So you can't go crazy with funding these committees, but I think. Uh, you know, denying reasonable requests, I think it's very demotivating, and I think the town suffers. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a poor way to save money. So I would support the full amount of requesting. Okay. Alan, what would you think, what, what increase do you think would be too much? Um, an increase that uh, certainly you know, couldn't be justified. Now I have to admit, as, as, a, as a cheap software guy, it, it sounds like a lot for survey software, but I also trust Adam, does done a good job of screening. He's, he's a smart guy. Um, I, I can't really answer that question, uh, but I don't think $800 is too much. That's well below the door. I, I consider Vision 2020 to, to, act, to be an incubator. Uh, for volunteer committees. Somebody has an idea to do something, they go to Vision 2020, they say, oh, somebody's already doing that, join, the, join together with them, or that's a good idea, let's
test it and see what happens. Uh, committees spin off from it, whatever. I, I, I just, from what I've seen that they do, it's a, it's a good productive use of $3,800, which in the scheme of things, as Tom said, it does add up. But in this case, I've seen enough of what they do that I have confidence they spend it wisely. And again, the reason it's $3,800 is because they have a whole lot of, you know, they have eight committees doing small things. So it's, again, $100 here, $100 there. I know what phone core costs. I know what that poster cost. Um, it, it, it's a good good expenditure of money. That's that's my opinion. I can't really put, I can't make it quantitative. I can't say ten thousand is too much. Okay, Grant. Uh, I'll, I'll support it because um, it's hard to put the actual limit on, on where that boundary is, uh, as Charlie asked. But it's um, they're reaching you know forty percent. You're getting input from forty percent of the Arlington households. This directs our entire strategy going forward. Might as well get it accurate. And that's what the software would do. So it's sort of how where we're directing the money to. I think in this case it's worth it. Well, so everyone put a motion on the floor. So moved. I'm sorry? So moved. Second. For 3, okay, moved uh, so moved and seconded for thirty eight hundred. Okay, motion's been made and seconded for 3,800. Any other discussion? Yeah, yeah, just one point I want to make. I'm not knocking what they do. I just don't, I just think they haven't gone out and explored other avenues of getting this money. They haven't done their homework yet, and they haven't, they just directly came up here with the data. Charlie? Yeah, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I'll bring it up. Um, they did come to the Capital Planning Committee. And uh, we rejected it. Okay. And, and it was for uh, more than three thousand dollars, as she mentioned. Um, and they <coughs> had to, you know, you know, we basically said that we didn't think it was an appropriate, it wasn't the capital expenditure that we wanted the township to take. They went and got the three thousand, the three thousand dollars from the CEBG. So it's not like they came to the finance committee first. And they are looking. I, I mean, I can't judge the. <laughs> the, the maintenance cost, but uh, you know whether that's valid. Or not. But I, I don't think it's fair to say that they didn't uh, try to go somewhere else. And they weren't successful in getting three thousand dollars from another source besides the finance committee, which was the CDG. Okay. okay, John and Bill. Well, if I may ask, why did you reject it? I mean, you rejected out of hand. You didn't say this from now to days. Well, let's just say that the uh, the Presentation for the value of the software. I mean, I, I wasn't, I wasn't particularly impressed with the reason for the software tonight either. But um, it, it, it wasn't a convincing presentation as to what I mean. They're spending the money, and what, what is the benefit? Um, that that wasn't that wasn't clear. It was the, the, the impression I got from what they said tonight was that this would aid them significantly in creating the survey document itself, and then as well. But nobody asked how. We asked how, they couldn't answer it. So now this was for the purchase of the software. For the purchase of the software, which apparently, when I hear tonight, might, might have included a laptop. I don't know where the laptop came from, but that wasn't brought up to account the thing. But the, the point I'm making is that, um, you know, in response to Tom's question, that they did go out and get it. It wasn't like the, they're just coming to the finance committee. They're, they've been around trying to raise money. They've got some money from the CBBG. And, and I think that's the, to their credit. Yeah. Bill? And I, I would just add to that uh, the advisory board that has been set up or is in the process of being set up, um, I'll be on that board. And I just think it's great that they're uh, making an effort to uh, connect the dots, if you will, so that maybe I'll see a glimpse of what they're doing. I can bring it back and also have a, a second set of eyes on how money is being spent. And uh, that's finance committee in addition to other people on the advisory board. The other thing is this, I think it's hard to put uh, real hard goals to what they do because they're, they're visionaries, right? They're looking for ways to improve the town of Arlington. And um, that's a pretty big agenda. And where they see they can do it, they move forward. And where they see there's an overlap, 
I think they're very good about uh, backing off. Um, so again, I, I seems like it's money well spent. They're not asking for a lot. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, I would just. I mean, the eight hundred dollars for the um, maintenance support of the software is not a lot. And um, in my prior life in the state in IT, we had an annoying and very counterproductive habit of investing in software, but then not being able to come up with the money for ongoing support. And that ends up being really sort of a very self-destructive approach. So, you know, now that they've bought the software, um, for them to be able to use it effectively going forward, they've got to be able to have support for it. So. Okay, um, motion has been made and seconded for $3,800 for the Vision 2020. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. All those in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Opposed? Abstaining? Okay. Motion carries 16 to 1. Okay, I want to remind people before I forget, uh, as you know, we have a new deputy town manager. Uh, his name is Sandy Pooler. Um, he has, uh, um, he's, uh, I, I know him, or I've worked with him uh, over the years in several different places, and he is excellent. Um, so I'm very, we're uh, very fortunate to get him. Um, I guess his last commute from Somerville to Amherst finally got to him. Um, so anyway, they're having a reception. I, I think you got emails on it. There's a reception. I think it's tomorrow morning. Does yeah. anybody remember the time? A week from tomorrow. Oh, it's a week from tomorrow. Three to five. Three to five. Three okay. So just to put it on your calendars and you can go down and chat with them and such. But you can go tomorrow morning. Okay, I'll go tomorrow. <laughs> Glad somebody reads those things accurately. Okay. Um, is there any budgets? We don't have any more people, right? Okay. I missed that one. Uh, uh, are there any budgets to report? <coughs> okay. Now, here's the next question. On Monday, we have a, uh, the Conservation Commission Water Bodies is coming in. That usually generates a few questions. Uh, but it's not going to take up the whole evening. Will people... Will there be budgets available for Monday? Because I don't want to bring everybody in for one article. Peter, you're you're my. Yeah, we'll have we'll have, we'll have a couple. Okay, so you'll have David. Well, did you? With, with Peter and I, we'll. we'll okay. We'll, 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 we'll have the uh, budget. It's like was, um, clerk and legal would be. Okay. Uh, 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 how about uh, Paul? Uh, unfortunately, we thought we would have. Budgets, but we won't be able to do them until next week. Okay, anybody else? Christine? No? Grant? Sorry? Okay, uh, Charlie? We can't even get meetings already. Uh, <clears throat> okay, what I'm going to do then is I'm Wednesday, won't we? Yeah, but I have to go. Oh. Okay, might you have a couple? Uh, um, okay, what I'll try to do is fill in as many numbers into these budgets as we, as these warrant articles as we can, you know, and just try to vote as many as we can. Uh, and Gloria, see if you can get more people in these uh, on Monday. Push hard. Okay. Uh, is there any other business before the committee? Okay, it is now 9.03. So you got an hour, almost an hour off. Okay, any other business? Meeting adjourned.